Thank you very much. Uh, lovely to be with, all, with you all this afternoon. It's brilliant to be here. So my name is Simon Truovis. Um, I'm country manager for RTB House. So I've been at RTB for about two and a half years. Prior to that, I spent 12 years at Google, and then prior to that, eight years at Haymarket Media. And it's a really interesting place that we're at right now. And what I'm going to talk to you about this afternoon is just give you a feel for how we see the future state. So how we feel about the world where there's no third-party cookies. So specifically, the depreciation of cookies in the Google Chrome sandbox environment. Now, it's a really interesting place because for some people, they might be thinking, actually, this is what we're going to know about our customer. Very little. We don't know what surrounds them in that space. Actually, it's a complete blank space. And when I think about blank space, I'm sort of thinking Taylor Swift. Maybe that's how we're thinking about it. It's just a complete blank space about our audience in the future. Now, for others, more tenuous. Anyone here watching Stranger Things? OK, a few people. So if you're familiar with the upside down, you'll sort of know where I'm going. If you're not the upside down, it's like a world which is, it's like a little bit, uh, it's a little bit trepidation. It's sort of a bit like hell. At first, it doesn't look familiar whatsoever. But over time, you start to see, actually, there's a few familiar parts to it, a few familiar signs to it. But the important piece is you need a guide because there's a massive sense of foreboding. So when you're starting to think about that future state and the world where there's no third-party cookies, either it's like a, it's a blank space, you don't know how to start with it, some clients thinking like that, or it's actually, do you know what? We know we need to do something, but we just need a good guide. And that's what I'd like to take you through. So when we think about that space, we quite often think about there's some really important things that we need to understand. And part of it is really showing up and understanding that consumer. And it's that consumer behavior in the future which we're more challenged and worried about. And the two things that I'd love you to walk away with from today is, is that we've actually written two pieces of code that have been fully adopted by the Google Chrome team and implemented into that Fledge environment. And they understand the creative and the best way to deliver dynamic creative and also the understanding of a consumer's value to you and your business. So we feel those are two really important pieces of information that you, as agencies and brands and marketeers, need to be able to do and understand in this, uh, in this world where there are no longer third-party cookies. And like I say, we've written that. And the reason that we're in this position is when Google started talking about disruption back in 2020, our CTO basically put together a, a team of 45 people. And it was all about understanding what this new world would look like. So we worked really closely with the W3C, really closely with the Chrome team, and then put together what we felt was going to be useful for, for consumers. Because we just felt what had been written wasn't strong enough. So I'll go into a few more details. But I think it's really important to understand actually why we felt we had to do this. And, and we felt that in the world we live in right now, there's disruption just everywhere. I mean, I don't really need to overplay it. We all felt it. We've had pandemics. We've had numerous wars. We've sort of seen that you know, travel as an industry destroyed, completely stopped. It started again. And now it's sort of stopped because we don't know if we've got COVID. We want to go away on holiday. Retail, it's never been more different. I guess we've all seen the significant shift to retail over the last two years. And that two-year journey, if you look at the ONS data, is incredible, the amount of resales, retail sales that are now online. But it's a world which keeps on disrupting and disrupting. And when I think about it, I think like, you know, we're working. We used to work from work. We then started working from home. I think now we're working from anywhere, possibly even from MadFest. So disruption keeps on going. And it's one of those things that we feel that to get through this disruptive time, you've got to innovate. And that's really at the heart of what we do. Um, and so when we think about consumers, we also think actually there's a lot which is changing there. And, and their perceptions continually change. So I think one of the challenges we feel in this brave new world is not only is there the regulation coming from government bodies, and also we're being dictated to by some of those big tech companies about the environments we've got to show up in, we've got to think about it from our point of view as well, which is as consumers, we've never ever been more in control than we are now. And actually, we're setting the standards. We know that people are advertising to us, but we want them to show up on our terms and in a privacy safe environment. And that's one of the things actually which is really fascinating about the Google Chrome sandbox, because it's completely privacy safe. And so it's really respectful of that consumer. And, and those expectations from consumers have been set already. And the interesting piece there is that when I think about consumers, they're, they're sort of treading this really weird tension between, I want privacy, 
and I, I do want privacy. I want you to respect my data. But also, what you really want to do is, I want to have personalized answers to me. I want to make sure they're relevant. And you just heard it from a million ads. Everyone wants that relevancy, that personalization. And it's fascinating when we look at, say, some of the McKinsey data. So from McKinsey back uh, earlier in this year, you'll sort of see that actually three quarters of consumers, they really want personalization. And it's one of those things then which actually helps them influence to buy. And that journey keeps on going. Because if you're bought and you continue to do the personalization, actually, you want to keep on buying. You'll do repeat purchases. And then you'll see on the far right, 78% of people actually will recommend to their friends if they've had a really good personalization experience from a consumer or from a brand. So there's this tension that we feel in terms of you want privacy, but also there has to be personalization. And that's one of the interesting things. Now, there's another thing which sort of really is speeding up what we're doing right now. And, and it's starting to really consider is that when I think about the open internet and I think about walled gardens, there's again, there's a really big disparity. And I, for one, personally think that we need to keep the open internet ecosystem alive and kicking. And when you look at the data from the Harris poll, you're going to see that actually 60% of consumers spend their time in the open internet. That's where they're spending their time. And that's really important because that's valuable. That's you, that's me, that's all of us. And yet there's a disparity because you'll see on the right-hand side that there's a disproportionate amount of investment in terms of media spend going through to the walled gardens. So there's this tension out there. And in the open internet, we need to do something about it. And again, that's at the heart of what we think about innovation and focus. We're just thinking about how can we live up to the ideals as a consumer? How do we make sure we can work in a privacy safe world? And actually, how can we support that ecosystem in terms of the open internet? So where does this put us? So I think we have a choice. I think we have a choice in front of us. And this is how we felt about it. We have a choice. We can do nothing. We can go back to that early piece where actually it's a Taylor Swift blank space. We're going to do nothing. We're going to ignore it. Or we can try and navigate in this new world. And I think for us, the real investment that we thought about strategically was where should we put our time? Where should we put our resources? And that's like I said, back in 2020, we actually put all our resources into how can we work in this safe environment in, in Google Chrome? And how can we give you another method? Because it's all about the methods you want to employ in this space. And this is a method which exists right now. So just for a couple of minutes, let me tell you a little bit more about what we've put together and what's available for you all. So just to be clear, when we think about this future state and the cookie-less world and crime, we felt that actually what had been written in terms of the code wasn't enough to give, as advertisers and marketeers, the right understanding to deliver personalized ads and to understand the consumer value to you as a business. And so we felt we had to do something about that, which is why we wrote outcome-based turtle dove and product-level turtle dove. And the important thing to take away here as well is that all of this is written in alignment with the principles from the Chrome team at Google. And it's a really important to think it's the Chrome team at Google, particularly as an ex-Googler, because they're the people driving this. And what you have to understand is from their point of view, they want to protect all of us in that Chrome environment to make sure things are privacy safe. So you've really got to understand the framework they're operating in. So we put together these two proposals, and product level turtle dove is the first one. And, and what that does is that actually helps understand that if you as a consumer are navigating through a site, we can still understand the products that you're interested in. And we do this on a group-based level. But it does mean that we can understand what you're interested in, what products have resonance, and actually the sort of things that are going to creatively inspire you to go back and continue on that path to purchase. So if, as an advertiser or a marketer, you're running dynamic creative and you really like that in today's environment, the comfort I can give you is you can do that in the future environment. And we've actually written the rules around how you can do that of our product level turtle dove, understanding first party data on your site. The second piece is, though, it's not just, as you sort of see this good man here, turning up and understanding the right creative. It's not just about that creative treatment, it's also understanding what is the value to me of somebody. And so the other piece that we wrote was outcome-based total love. And with this, it's all about understanding the value at a user level of how important this person is to you as a business. So again, if you take that example of someone going through a website, actually, where are they in their path to purchase? What are the things that we can better understand to indicate they're moving towards that purchase? And we can do this at a user level. And all of this is under the safeguard and fully accepted by the Chrome team in the sandbox environment. 
So the incredible piece here is that it's not just about showing up, but we can also understand the value, and that means how you bid. And in this programmatic space, when you need to understand the value built to bid at, we felt that was a key and critical part of the ecosystem that had to be available. And that's why we wrote both of these. And so through these, as authors, Orwood really says, come talk to us and get a good understanding of the other method we can give you to, help, to employ in this new landscape. There's a lot of good chat about identifiers, and we can work with all the identifiers. But we also felt you had to have a scale option. And that's what we put together. Now, when we think about the scale option, we also think about how we can understand profiles in real time. So it's not just in terms of the innovation in terms of Chrome and that sandbox for the future. We also think about the technology that sits beneath it. So for those of you who are familiar with deep learning artificial intelligence, that's what we employ throughout our marketing stack. So it's 2,500 times more powerful than machine learning. And it's the sort of technology that they employ in self-driving cars. So if anyone's driving a Tesla here or fancies one, if everyone's thinking about Waymo and driverless cars, they use deep learning in those environments because it's so complex. You can't plan. There's no way you can physically understand or mentally understand the decisioning that you need to make. And it's a chaotic landscape that we live in, which is why you need superior tech. And that's what we've got within us at RTB House. And we employ that on the marketing stack to give you the better results. And the reason we feel that's important is if you're using machine learning, that's OK, but it's all rules based. And so you have to set the rules. And the rules don't necessarily paint the entire picture. What paints a better picture is deep learning because it's that deeper understanding that we can do. And again, without going into too much detail here, please come talk to us about it. So the interesting piece is that gives us the opportunity to have outcomes. And there's a reason why we talk to outcomes to a lot of our clients. So what we tend to find is there's a lot of people who talk about outcomes in a performance-based landscape. And there's a lot of people who talk to us actually increasingly about outcomes in the branding landscape. So for branding, it might be about, I need to understand the cost per view, cost per completed view. It might be about viewability. Or from a performance point of view, it might simply be from left to right. It might be around, actually, with a new Marcus, which you can never read at the back, but it's a, it's a omnichannel retailer. They were really interested in actually driving sales revenue. So super simple, just drive sales revenue. Well, we can employ the deep learning to do that. And it works incredibly well. For others, such as All Beauty, it's about average order value. And again, it's about understanding consumers, where they're going through navigating, and then driving the result for them. And finally, it might be about sales volume. So we work with lots of uh, fashion platforms, and Minto is just one of them. But the point really here is, when you have something as powerful as deep learning technology, you can ask it to do things. You can say, we need an outcome. And there's a reason we wrote outcome-based total love. We called it outcome-based. It's because we know as marketers and advertisers, you need to deliver against outcomes. And so that's really at the heart of what we do. So when I start to think about all of this, I think very much that if you want to be in a position whereby you can shape your space in the future, and if you want to have different options and different methods about how you can reach people, reach consumers in that cookie-less environment within the Chrome, uh, Chrome sandbox, then we're just here to give you that other method. There's, there's more out there. And it's unlikely, necessarily, that you'll have talked to us about it, because really, brutally, honestly, we haven't done a great PR job around it. But we'd like to let you know now, we're having lots of conversations with clients and agencies now about how we can facilitate that in the future. And I feel that if we don't own that space, and if we don't do that, then actually, we're in danger of the open internet starting to crumble away, because we're not investing in it as it should be. So the call out here is, Help us be your guide. If you're with me on Stranger Things, our logo on the right-hand side is an 11 on the side. I'm not saying that we're a superhero, but we've got good ideas about how this would all work. Um, we've obviously got a stand here. As you walk through at the entrance, you'll have seen us there. But come chat to us. If you're really interested about how to reach consumers in that new environment, you've got good guidance there. And we've got some really great tech underpinning it all. So that's me. I'm Simon from RTB House. Thank you very much for letting me stand between you and your lunch today.